August 2024. The cryptocurrency market is valued at 2.2 trillion, making it 37.5% larger than the silver market, which sits at 1.6 trillion. If the crypto market continues to grow at its current rate, it could surpass the gold market valued at $12 trillion within the next decade. Cryptocurrencies represent a new way to pay for things and offer much more beyond that. But its growth and advantages did not come without exploits, scams, craze, and frauds. The Better Business Bureau ranked cryptocurrency scams as the number one riskiest in 2023. 80% of people targeted by the scam reported losing money, an average of $3,800. Research from the University of Texas at Austin suggests cyber criminals moved $75 billion into suspicious accounts between 2020 and 2024. Remember the NFT craze where digital art sold for millions? Now most of them are worth only a few thousands or worse, they're worth zero dollars. Blockchain technology, the thing Bitcoin runs on, laid the foundation for many innovative projects. But unfortunately, it also opened up opportunities for scammers, fraudsters, and exploiters. 2014, Mt. Gox was hacked. The world's biggest trading platform for the virtual currency Bitcoin abruptly halted all of its transactions on Tuesday. Approximately 850,000 Bitcoins stolen worth around $450 million at the time. 2017, crypto queen Ruja Ignatova orchestrated an estimated $4.5 billion cryptocurrency scam called OneCoin. She's wanted by the FBI to this day. Reward for information leading to her arrest, $5 million. May 2022, Terra Luna collapses, wiping out approximately $40 billion across the crypto ecosystem. Daquan and his co-founder are now on the run and wanted by both the United States and South Korea. November 2022, FTX, the crypto exchange founded by Sam Bankman Freed, collapsed. Cause misuse of customer deposits to cover risky trades made by its sister company, Alameda Research. Losses $8 billion. Sam Bankman Freed and associates are in prison. April 2024, Binance CEO Chung Ping Zhao was sentenced to four months in prison and a $50 million fine for failing to implement strict anti-money laundering measures at the crypto exchange company Binance. August 12, 2024, the SEC filed charges against Novatech LTD, its founders and several promoters for orchestrating a $650 million crypto fraud. That's a lot of money taken from the hopeful public who just wanted to progress financially from this new technology. Nonetheless, Bitcoin and the blockchain tech are being used in innovative ways. But the funny thing is, the father of this land of opportunity remains unknown for the last 13 years. The unknown creator. The main reason I'm here is to clear my name that I have nothing to do with Bitcoin. Edison gave us the light bulb. The Wright brothers gave us the air travel. Alexander Graham Bell gave us the telephone. Einstein gave us relativity. And Satoshi gave us digital money. Year 2008. A mysterious individual under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto publishes a white paper explaining Bitcoin, a new digital currency, a peer-to-peer -peer cash system, and its implications. 2009, Nakamoto releases the Bitcoin code and starts communicating with other programmers on the internet via chats and email about helping to improve the technology. 2011, Nakamoto stops all online communications and disappears without anyone ever meeting him face-to-face. -face. 13 years later, we still don't know who this Satoshi guy really is. Is he a person? Is he a group of smart individuals? Is he a government organization? Nobody knows. Nakamoto is estimated to have 1 million Bitcoin, which currently puts his net worth at $66.4 billion. With Bitcoin having a finite supply of 21 million, Nakamoto holds 5% of the total stash. In comparison, the US government holds 8,134 metric tons of gold which is 3.3% of the estimated 244,000 metric tons of gold supply worldwide. With 5% of all Bitcoin in his possession, Nakamoto could wield significant influence in the cryptocurrency market, but he chose anonymity instead. Let's face it, he's probably sipping piña coladas in Bora Bora and won't come out of retirement anytime soon. Does his creation work though? Could we end up using Bitcoin as money or is it a scam? But millionaires are piling on Bitcoin. 
June 2024, MicroStrategy, led by Michael Saylor, had amassed 226,500 Bitcoins, paying on average $3,558 per Bitcoin at a total cost of $7 billion. Source BitcoinTreasuries.com. Others follow this strategy. Tesla, led by Elon Musk, holds 10,500 Bitcoins. Block, led by Jack Dorsey, co-founder of Twitter, holds 8,000 Bitcoins. Source, Visual Capitalist. These high-profile individuals and companies are participating in the new digital gold rush. These are highly intelligent people. If they're investing in it, it's clear that they trust Bitcoin and its blockchain technology. As with all software systems, there have been bugs with Bitcoin, but the development community that formed around the technology since the departure of Nakamoto has demonstrated a strong ability to address and fix these problems swiftly. As of today, there are no major open bugs in Bitcoin that pose a critical threat to its core functionality or security. This trust in some cryptocurrencies and blockchains is further demonstrated by more regulatory bodies getting involved in the crypto world. Like the SEC approving Bitcoin ETFs earlier this year, and more recently, the Ethereum ETFs. The more eyeballs on the technologies, the more people scrutinizing them, the more they get improved. The more they get improved, the easier it will be for mass market adoption. These high net worth individuals trust Bitcoin as a technology, yes, but what is the real reason they're investing in it? It's not like they're buying thousands of TVs because they trust that the technology works. Is it because crypto will replace money as we know it sometime soon? While the Bitcoin technology is primarily focused on being digital money or property and allowing peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, Ethereum, the second most popular cryptocurrency and its network enables a plethora of digital products, including digital money and peer-to-peer -peer exchange. Ethereum's smart contract capabilities can help automate many aspects of contract execution, reducing the need for manual oversight and execution. It enables decentralized finance, allowing users to borrow, lend, earn interest on cryptocurrencies, and even trade without needing traditional bank. An example of this technology is Uniswap. Its non-fungible tokens capability allows the representation of unique, non-replicable digital assets, allowing creators to token see their work, art, music, etc., and sell it in the digital marketplace like OpenSea. It enables decentralized applications, which again Uniswap is an example of, as well as supply chain management and potentially more. Ethereum's technology could significantly change legal, accounting, banking, voting, governance, real estate, and many more industries in the future. That's great. But more importantly, the main question we've been trying to answer, could these cryptocurrencies replace money as we know it today? Money consistently has three functions store of value, unit of account, and medium of exchange. Store of value means money must maintain its value over time, allowing individuals to save and use it in the future without significant loss of purchasing power. Unit of account means money must provide a standard measure for valuing goods and services, making it easier to compare prices and track financial transactions. Medium of exchange means money facilitates transactions by acting as an intermediary in the buying and selling of goods and services, simplifying trade. Do Bitcoin, Ethereum, or any of these other cryptocurrencies satisfy all three of these properties right now? The simple answer is, it's complicated and only time will tell. Cryptocurrencies have the potential to fulfill the functions of money, but their effectiveness in the three functions of money vary depending on the specific cryptocurrency and the context. Let's take Bitcoin for example. Often referred to as digital gold, Bitcoin is considered a store of value by many due to its limited supply of 21 million coins. While Bitcoin is used as a unit of account in some cases, its price volatility can make it challenging to use consistently for pricing goods and services. Bitcoin is increasingly accepted by merchants and businesses, but its use as a medium of exchange is limited by transaction speed and costs, which can be higher compared to traditional payment systems. Several projects and initiatives are working to address the issues of transaction speed and costs associated with Bitcoin, aiming to enhance its viability as a medium of exchange, but none of them is yet perfect. Ethereum and stablecoins also satisfy the three properties of money to some degree and are candidates to potentially replace it in the future. By when, 
We don't know. Then why have the millionaires, billions, and companies been accumulating Bitcoin in particular? Not necessarily because it will replace money. That's to be confirmed in the coming years as the technology improves. For now, though, Bitcoin is mostly being used as a store of value. Bitcoin has seen a remarkable growth of 462.78% from 2019 to August 14, 2024. This means that if someone invested $1,000 in Bitcoin at the beginning of 2019, it would be worth approximately $5,627.80 as of August 2024. In comparison, the S&P 500 has delivered a return of approximately 60-70% from 2019 to August 14, 2024. This might be why the millionaires and billionaires are buying Bitcoin. They saw its growth potential both as a financial asset and a technology early on. Some of them think that Bitcoin as an asset passes the non-official Bernard Arnault test, which asks, what should I invest in today that someone wealthier, smarter, or more cultured than me would want to buy from me in 10 years? They think Bitcoin fits that description and they consider it to be a good investment for the long term. Of course, the information in this video does not constitute financial advice. Please conduct your own research, make your own decisions, and consult with financial experts as needed. I am not a financial expert. You and you alone are responsible for the financial decisions you make. As the saying goes, knowledge is power. Applied knowledge, meaning actions, are even more powerful. To lean more and prepare yourself for this technological revolution, check out crypto courses on Skillshare. See the link in the video description for your first month fee. If you like this video, you're gonna love this one on screen, which is about AI will take over many jobs being performed by a person today. From waiter to programmer, no job is safe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.